Sabah al khair. So this is the second part of the login. Okay, so in the first part we did, uh, we checked the database to make sure that the user is valid or not. We use the data set here, we have a data set. Okay, and the table adapter, and then we created a query. And this query receives a parameter called txt, uh, a string parameter. In this case, we're just taking the value whatever the user entered. Now, you could have done it differently, but this is just a quick way to get the information from the user. Okay. And then we run this query, and this query will give you back either a, a table, data, uh, data table, or nothing. In the data table, you have actually something called rows and the number of rows that you found. If the number of rows is equal to zero, that means I didn't find that. Or if you actually found something, so user zero give you the first row in the result set, which we're expecting only one row because we should have only unique user, right? Uh, and then we check the password in that table. Is it equal to the password that the user typed on the screen? If it is not equal and or the, we did not find anything, we tell them you did not find uh, login is incorrect username or so you can change that say you can just change that say user or password are incorrect is incorrect okay else we actually found that user and then we we tell the user found in this case it doesn't make a sense anymore because we send them back to the main page so now it says uh, we use something called session. Now that I didn't explain it very well. I mean, not very well. I explained it in, uh, briefly in the first video, but in this video, I'll tell you what a session is. Session is a temporary storage area, uh, area in memory on the server side. It is used to store temporary information and sessions, they have timeout. So the timeout usually is five minutes or you can set it yourself. So if you create the session and you don't, you stay inactive for five minutes or whatever time you set, that session disappears. So the information that you can you store in it, it's gone. Why do we use it? We store, for example, sensitive data because it's sitting on the server side. We do things like shopping cart it's sitting on the server side. Okay. So, or you can do it locally if you want using uh, JavaScript and cookies. Okay, but here in the session, we, we are storing the user information, the username. So now if I have this session, I have the, this user in the session, I know that this user is a valid user. If I don't have this user in the session, that means it's an invalid user. So any page that he goes to or she goes to and, uh, and we don't have that user in the session, it means they try to come to this website illegally, right? And so we need to send them back to the login page, all right? So the user value, the, the field name in the user value is called username in the session, okay? So if we wanna, we need to look for that field name called username, all right? Okay, so how are we gonna do the, to secure these pages. Now I have several pages in the website. Let's take any of them, okay? Which one of them we have? Uh, I think we have customer, let's just do customer forms, okay? This is customer forms, right? Now, if you double click here, if we look at the source for this guy, let's add the label first of all, just to show you. Uh, I'm gonna add the label here. It's, it's, all right. All right. Uh, where is that label? I'll just put it here. Uh, let's do that. Control Z. Let's add it here for now. Okay. And this label is going to be my username. Okay. If you're logged in, it should show you username here. All right. I'm going to change this in the property and make it LBL. Use LBL user, for example. Okay. Now you can do that better, but okay. Uh, then what we want to do is that we have in this page we have something called 
source. Do you see that? Customer, the, the .NET. If I click on this, there is a function that we really haven't used yet, which is called what? Is called page load. What does that mean? It means when I come to this page, I can check. I can do things that I want to, to uh, for example, finding information or going to the session, making sure this is a valid user or not. Okay, so this is happens the first thing when you open the page. So what are we gonna do? You can say if session, you see that? What value are we looking for? The same value that we put on the first one, which is what? Remember what was it? Username, right? If it is there, if it's not equal to null, means that it is there, what do we do? We actually can change that label to what? LBL user dot text equal session. And then I can put in username here. What are the possible mistakes here? Yes, Abaya. The possible mistakes are, is that you did not put, uh, what's going on here? Oh, I have to do this as a text, uh, as a string, two string, yeah. Because it doesn't know what type it is, okay? What are the possible mistakes here? The possible mistakes is that this is misspelled. So to make sure that you got right, you got it right, you go back to that login page. Where's that login page? Here it is. And I see here it's called username. Okay, you can just copy it and paste it from here to make sure that you got it correct. All right, so I can go back in here to the uh, customer form and then it is the same, but just to make sure you can copy it and paste, okay? So that if it is valid, what about if it is not valid? What should I do if it's not valid? Where should I send the user if it's not valid? If this user does not exist in the session, what does that mean? They did not come to the website properly. They have to go through the login first before they visit this page. So what should I do? We should send them back to where to the login page, right? So what do I do? I say response dot uh, redirect, and then what do I put here? I put the login page. What was it? What's the login page? I'll just put that in here. What is the name of the login page? Login dot ASPX. So I'll put here login ASPX and I'll put semicolon, all right? Let's test it and see if it works. So I'm gonna run it, if I'm gonna run this, and I'll show you, you can debug these to see how you can, how does actually your program work. I'm gonna put a debug point in here to show you how debugger work in Visual Studio. So what you can do, you can run it now, run this page. I'm going, I'm trying to go to this page directly without going to the login first, okay? So what, let's see what happens. Because I'm debugging it, it will send me to see the form, the page load first. So if I do step over, uh, let me just move this here. You see that step over here, step over, it would go, it did not find it. So where did it go? It went to the else. So now if I step over again, it will go to the login page. Now, if I simply, I'm done, I know I verified that it's doing the right thing, so all I have to do is what? Run it, okay? Or continue here. Now, where did it send me to? The login page, even though I was trying to access that page, right? Now, if I do ABC, for example, if I do ABC and then I log in properly, one, two, three, and then hit log in, it sent me to the, to the main page. Remember, what was that form? The page that we're working with is called what? Customer form. 
So if I go there now, again, it took me to that debug. Now if I do uh, step over, did it find it? It found it. So because I did log in, now this page is accessible to me. Now if I continue, it actually take me to that page. You see that? Where does it, do you see that ABC? Where did that ABC come from? From this session, because we put it in the login. Now it's available for me in that session. Do you get the idea? It's good. Yeah. So that is how we do uh, session validation. Okay, make sure that the login is correct. I can store information in the session and I can do, uh, and I can do, uh, retrieve this information from the session. I'll pause this for a minute and get answer your questions. All right, so we are uh, at the end of this. So in this part, the last part, I'm gonna show you how we actually do logout. Now I'm doing it only in this page, but you need to do it in all secure pages. You need to have a link about logout or uh, URL, whatever. I, have a, I just simply added a button here in this page. So what do you do to log out? So when I double click in here, when I do log out, what should I do to do log out? Simple. The information that we put in the session, we need to do what with it? We need to remove that session. So the session is gone. So now if the user tried to go to this session to get information from that session, cannot find it. And then you can send them either to the main page or to the login page. It's up to you how you do that. So what I'm going to do, we have some codes called session. All I have to do is say abandon. When you say abandon, what does that do? It actually kills that session. That session is gone anymore, it's not there. All right, and all the information in that session is gone. Okay, so, what ha so if somebody tried to go again to that page, this page that is secure, and tried to find the username, they cannot find it. So now it had, we send them back to the login. And at the end, you can say response dot redirect to any page you want. So if you want to say index.html, it will send them to that index.html. Okay. Uh, capital is the index. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now if I run this page, okay, if I move this thing, this keep stays in the way. Okay, you guys can't see that, but okay, so if I run this page, it will take me to this page, but because I haven't logged in yet, so it will send me back to the login. So I type in ABC and then one, two, three, log in. It took me to the main page. If I go to the customer page, this is my customer page. If I do log out, it sends me back to the main page. Now, if I try to access that page again, what should happen? It should send me back to the login because I killed the session. The session is not there anymore. And that's what happens. Is that clear? So this is a simple way of doing login validation and securing your pages, all right? Now, there are many other ways you could do that. You could do write the code yourself. You could do SQL statement yourself. But this is using the data, the, uh, the tools that are available in Visual Studio, We're using data set to run the queries for us. All right. We're done with this uh, video and I'll put this on uh, YouTube so you can watch it for your project. Okay.